How are we doing everybody? Welcome to Russell Heritage Golf. Today i got a really good sort of analogy slash drill for you guys to be doing. Um, it's kind of come about because I've had quite a few conversations recently with online lessons and had these sort of group discussions about, um, you know, the sort of release, matching it up with the body action. And basically how do you blend it together to sequences so this is when i personally think that if you're trying to isolate a fault um, then you might want to work on drills and just concentrate on one area of movement but when you're starting to think about sequencing so you're trying to put together obviously this sort of timing relationship of stuff then it's pro probably best if you can to try and find some sort of analogy or drills to help you get this sequence now the, the reason golf is difficult right because obviously what you're trying to do is you're trying to basically move your arm if we focus on the lead arm because it's obviously the straight arm relationship to the club but you're basically trying to move your arm in space to give you the best possible chance of generating distance but also um, obviously returning it back into the same place which requires a lot of timing so not only do you need to potentially be aware of um, cocking motions and down cocking motions you also need to be aware of rotational movements of the lead arm and obviously, like I said, you've got to return this to the point of, of impact where the hands are back in front of the ball. But we can also get analogies and feels. So a really nice feel is an axe drill. Now, the axe drill, and a, as a term, has been used multiple times so, and, and multiple different ways. And, and, and I just think it's, it's a good sort of analogy to try and picture. The idea is that we've got a couple of things that we're going to be thinking about today. Um, and if it, if it helps, you can turn the club similar to this. Like I said, I know that other pros have talked about this aspect as well before, but I just, like I said, I think it's a good, solid analogy to use. So if I was kind of holding the axe and you're going to have to pretend that you're adding considerable weight to the golf club as well, then what would generally happen is as you swing this back, the weight of the object would pull you over towards your trail side in the backswing position. So it would be extremely unlikely if this was a heavy weighted item that you would turn, you know, incredibly centrally, right? So you wouldn't get kind of stuck too much this way. You would generally lend yourself to turning behind the ball. Now, the second part to the drill is that I want you to throw it into the ground. Now, I'll, I'll go from side on perspective here, right? So if I was setting up towards this golf ball, like I said, you're going to get set up and then you'd have shifted over towards the right hand side a bit because of the weight of the object and then i want you to feel like similar to where this little pile of golf balls is here that i just want you to throw the axe down in towards the ground right and then you would end up doing something like so so you would basically just throw the club down so the rotational movement in the backswing because of this sort of pretended weight of the axe has helped you create a rotational shape so that you can basically shall we say bring the club down on plane now let's say that we kind of lent the idea where i suggested that okay well we want to keep the same amount of intent of throwing the object down towards the ground but instead of throwing it down towards the ground i want you to try and throw it down towards the golf ball and then what you would possibly find as a reaction to this is that you would obviously start to rotate and move so instead of kind of swinging back and just immediately throwing it's like i want you to keep this feeling but i want you to throw it at the ball and the way that you would end up doing this is by rotating and feeling like you're moving with an amount of linear motion to basically ensure that you control the low point so in terms of the detail as to what's going on there, it's like, well, the arm would be working quicker, there'd be rotational movement, and it obviously gets complicated to kind of dissect actually what's happening. But as an analogy, it seems to work really, really well for golfers. It's kind of like, okay, well, think about club head speed and feel like you're throwing the club down. How does that feel? Well, that feels powerful, but obviously useless. And then it's like, well, if you had the same intent, but you rotate it to try and help it control its low point, all of a sudden you start to have a feeling where you're generating power but you're also still very much abiding by should we say the principles of keeping the golf club on plane which are paramount for consistency and success so it's an analogy that i want you to kind of feel for those of you that are kind of still slightly uncertain it's something that 100 percent we're going to come back to but i like a little bit of this way and then moving in towards the lead side i think it helps generate additional force in towards your golf swing i like the idea of keeping the pelvis downward facing and turning into the trail leg i think it helps you shift correctly in towards the trail side and again generate an element of linear without it becoming excessively sort of anywhere near slidey or too linear in the swing 
So I like these feels. A lot of golfers struggle with the release. They're not too certain exactly what to do. Should you be holding onto lag? Should you be releasing lag? What should you be doing? Well, obviously this is when it becomes very much more of a feel sort of thing. And this is why it's an analogy. So this isn't a reality. This isn't an articulation of exactly what's happening in the golf swing. This is a feel, it's a drill. The feeling is you've got a really weighted object, similar to an ax. You're swinging it back, it would shift you over here. It's unlikely with weight you would go this way. It would shift you this way. And then I want you to feel like you're doing this basically, or not even that, I don't want to break my club, I want you to feel like you're literally throwing it down. But then as you're doing that, it's like, well, I now want you to throw it at the ball. And then instead of, how would you do it? You wouldn't do it this way. So you would start to move and throw. And hopefully it would make you more athletic, but it would also help open up an element of awareness that there's loads of space here that you can use even if you're still kind of rotating coming in towards the downswing. So I like it and I would suggest that you guys have a go because analogies paint a really powerful picture and the trick is just trying to find ones that genuinely really work. So for some of you, it might not, fine, we'll go again. Others, hopefully you'll really relate to that because it seems to have had a knock-on effect with quite a lot of people that I'm teaching online and they seem to be responding excellent to it. So hopefully it'll work for you guys as well. Hopefully you enjoy the video. Go and work on that drill. I would not suggest actually using a weighted object because of the possible chance of it occurring in some sort of injury. Wouldn't go down that route. It's an analogy. Have a go. See you soon.